All right, camera's going the wrong way. <laughs> okay. Just thought I'd uh, update you guys on what's currently going on with the uh, Stealth Micro Camper. As you know, it's mostly done. The back section, the sleeping section is mostly done. Um, I've been working on the, the front portion of it, which is the uh, micro kitchen. And um, it had to be designed with uh, several things in mind. Uh, one is uh, single person mode as well as double person mode. Right now, it's configured for mixed mode. Um, basically, what I decided to do with the kitchen, originally I had a, um, a cooler that I bought that was especially bought because it fit the spot, and I was just going to lay a board there. But then I decided, you know what, stuff might fly everywhere, so I might want to make sure it's secure, you know, in, in the event of a crash, somewhat secured. So what I came up with was um, the check station. I don't know if you guys recall me making a chuck station uh, for my honeymoon when I went cross country. It didn't work out so well. I mean, the chuck station worked, but it was a pain in the butt to lug it around into the hotel rooms. But if you're planning on keeping it in a vehicle, I think a chuck station might work. And you can actually pull it out and take it to like a picnic table or something. So what I did was I rebuilt a, a chuck station designed specifically to fit the spot. And um, it had several specifications it had to do, you know, in, in order to make it work. I had to make it fit the spot, but I also had to make sure I could store it in the vehicle, you know, when I have a passenger. So that um, was a little bit difficult, but I, I did it. Uh, long story short, the chuck station isn't much. It, it's uh, basically a rice station <laughs> because I'm Asian. And also with the, with the rice cooker, I can cook anything. I can cook meat. I can cook pasta i can cook anything okay and this will run off electric it'll run off the uh, the vehicle's inverter system but what's different about this station is this this doesn't come off <laughs> it's actually screwed down so the the rice cooker is actually screwed into place and um you remove the whole unit and underneath here it basically has like rice and and other goodies that can go back there which i'll, I'll take out and i'll show the check station here later but uh it also has access for uh stuff here like soy sauce um you know utensils and whatnot that you might want to use spoons forks or whatever and um other foods or or, or things like badia and um so the check station sits here and that would allow me to sit in the front there and drive and cook but then you're like well what about this this desk table thingy here you got going on well the the table here is actually a dining table and it's optional but it can be put up it's designed to collapse easily and go away okay so it's made for two people so that if two people were in the vehicle living in the vehicle because this even though this is a tiny 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 little vehicle okay it is a hatchback a uh, 2005 Pontiac Matri Matrix, I think. No, Vibe, Vibe. The Toyota Matrix is the same vehicle, but it's tiny. But it will actually accommodate two full-grown adults, uh, you know, well, one shorter than the other, <laughs> sleeping in it and living in it. So right now it's designed mainly for a single person, but it has the option of converting a two-person. In two-person mode, you can't have the kitchen up here. So, you cannot have the kitchen up here in two-person mode because, well, you could. Then, you know, the back person could sit back here. You, you put the bed up, and then the back person can sit back here if you wanted to do it that way. But most people, when they travel, like, you know, a couple, they're going to want to both sit up front. So, it was designed specifically to uh, it functions like a regular vehicle up front. So, if you take the chuck station out, it'll actually slide. It's just the right height to slide under here. And have the rice cooker sticking out this way. So this side becomes a kitchen. <laughs> so this check station is kind of unique because it's designed to fit in the front and, and fit and look nice and, and be functional. Okay. As well as um, be movable to the back section. You could slide it here. So so the, the wooden portion right there of the chuck station slides underneath the, the bedding. And then the rice cooker sticks out right here. And you can actually still cook rice from here, although nobody could really monitor it. So, you know, a little, fish, a little iffy doing it that way, but I may have to do it that way and test it out and make sure it works. It's going to be run off electric. You know, I feel a little bit safer running off electric because I can unplug it and stuff. But um, the rice could still be cooked even while driving with two-person mode. It's just that you're going to have to put it back here 
under the bed. And then for nighttime, you'll probably want to move the rice cooker uh, back up front, the kitchen up front, so that, you know, people can access the... Because this is this space under here is a bathroom. <laughs> so, you know, you, you got to do a little bit of maneuvering, but I'm trying not to do too much. But what's really cool about it, I wanted to show it out is, uh, show it off here is... Um, this i'm really uh, happy with the way the table came out everything here is, is pretty much recycled from um, little blue mm. oh, nothing like a cold soda but i want to make sure that it would hold two people sitting and eating and it looks like it's got plenty of room two people can sit and eat obviously the kitchen would not be here for two two uh two person mode but i wanted to show what the, how this is made you can see there was a bunch of different holes because I was trying to figure out how to mount it, how to make it somewhat stable so it wouldn't fall. And you're like, how's he holding this up? The the build is designed so that I didn't have to put too many holes into the vehicle, as few holes as possible. So what I did was um, this thing removes like that. <laughs> it's actually resting on this, this leg and this. So it's using the um, the vehicle's shifter. And then it kind of wedges up up to the edge here and kind of holds in place. So it's just the perfect height. And what I did on the bottom was this. I made a little slider thingy. So this way it can be taken apart and put up. And to mount it, you know, you just you just put it up. Well, you probably, it's better to do this with two hands. But basically you put it on there, you slide it in there and it locks. You know, it locks. I'm doing it one-handed. So you can see I can even do it with one hand here. So I, I assembled the, the, the table with one hand. It's, you know, it's not super st stable, but it should be stable enough. Don't put anything super heavy on it. But if you're putting a... It's basically meant for a plate of food. Or two plates of food. Maybe um, some rotisserie chicken. What I foresee it being used for is this. Like, you cook the rice while you're driving off electric. You pull into Walmart or Winn-Dixie or, or Publix or wherever and you buy the meat dish that they have there, whether it be rotisserie chicken, fried chicken, um, pulled pork, whatever. And then you come out here and you can sit and eat. You set up your little table. So, you know, the other option is you could drive and cook rice and then cook the meat dish in a separate um, rice pot and then pull over somewhere and then set up and eat. You know, if they have a picnic table, obviously you might want to do that. But if they don't, two people can sit and eat comfortably. You know, you got plenty of room here. So this was a, an interesting build. All recycled. Um, so my expenditure has been like still only like 20, 25 bucks. Uh, this arm thing is kind of interesting. It, it actually fits in the, um, the drink holder. And what I did was I, I cut the um, a round piece here to match. And then I had to make a, a brace it and wedge it up kind of like a cup almost. Because see these things, even though they look perfectly uh, round, they're actually kind of like a little cone shape almost. So they're bigger on top and they get smaller as they go down. So you can see there's kind of a wedge shape here, a cone shape, almost like a cup. Another way to do it potentially is you just get a cup or something that fits that perfectly and then you pour it with cement or some hard stuff and then you put the wood in it, you know, with a nail to hold it in place and then you have a cup that slides in and out. So that's one way to do it. I did it with wood just because I don't have cement. <laughs> I would have got a cup and got some cement or plaster or something to harden inside and what you do is you take a wood like this and you put a screw or a nail, a couple nails through going crosswise so that it can embed when the um the what the putty or whatever it is you use in there the um plaster or cement whatever you use to harden inside the cup hardens and it'll lock it in place but this goes in and it's wedge shaped so it kind of locks it see so you see look it, it hardly moves it's uh, made to not move <laughs> so that that's why it's somewhat stable okay so and it was taken like made like this originally i had it i was like well i screwed it in and i locked the um the wooden you know the the beam down this beam was screwed in and locked down and everything but then i was like you know what of course i could make it so it actually maybe i'll do that i could make it you know like have a piece go through here and then it can fold I might actually make it so this is collapsible as one piece so what i may do is put a little hole here and and um you know i don't know if that's going to make it stable or cause a problem here but i'm i'm going to try to possibly make it so you can um fold this um or just not deal with folding it just store it like that you know it can it can go in here and, and store yeah i think making it with the hole and folding it and stuff might be um making it more complicated and adding potential problems. The, the whole build has been to try to keep things um, 
as simple as possible because you start having too many gadgets, too many foldouts, too many something's going to break when you're on the road, okay? It always happens. It always breaks, and then yeah, you're out of whatever the table, whatever you're using. So by having it like this without having it screwed in or flipping and stuff like that, I think it's going to be better. You just slide it on there, and you can move it around. And, and just when you put it up, you can do this. You know, you can put it up like that. It stores like that, and it's kind of flat. So that's the table. And uh, in addition to being used as a... Um, as a food table it can also be used as a uh, computer desk so you know i could i think the way to do this is you, you kind of line up the bottom and then you work your way so you line up the bottom well you kind of do it like that you kind of line up the bottom okay i didn't do it i didn't do a very good job it's hard to do this one-handed i think it's better to do this two-handed anyhow this can set like that. It's not lined up or, or even secure right now, but you would set it like this and you can put a little computer here and you can work like, just like the cops do. You know, they have a little workstation. Now I wanted to show the, the dining area and show how it works in um, two person mode. Right now, like I said, it normally when I'm driving, this would be off like that. So I can sit in the front seat and I can cook. You know, this doesn't have to be here either. That will be in the way. So I can I can lean over and cook and watch the food while I'm driving. Just like uh, even better than a little blue because I can monitor it. And there'll be a switch, you know, for the power to turn the rice cooker off. Because the rice cooker, when you plug it in, is always on. So you'll be able to switch it off or unplug it somewhere instead of, um, you know, trying to mess with the rice cooker. So when it's done cooking, it'll do that. But this is my little spray bottle here, which I still need to find a home for. This, I'm going to move all this out, all these things, you know, because I'm just going to try to take this out just to show you how it comes out. I'm trying to do one-handed. It just slides right out, okay? It's, uh, I'm going to take that off just for now, just to show you how this comes out. Show you what this looks like. Hang on a minute. Uh, I want to show you the, the unit here. Okay. It essentially is mostly an empty box uh, that was done so that it would be light. Uh, my previous mistake when I built the chuck station, I had a front panel and a back panel, and I was carrying a toaster, and I was carrying a rice cooker and a sandwich maker. I was carrying a whole kitchen. Uh, this time, because what I found when I went across country like that, I didn't use all that crap. <laughs> You're lugging around all this extra stuff, taking up precious space in your storage. So all I'm going to have for the cooker is a rice cooker, just one cooker. And um, uh, also another one that's um, based on uh, butane, my butane cooker. So you can use a butane or a propane cooker. But uh, the rice cooker is for cooking rice, for cooking pasta, for cooking food when I don't feel like using fire. You know, when I want to use electricity, which is free for me because I can generate it. But underneath, of course, I got my rice. And I will have, like, um, other things in there, pasta and stuff. Could store plates and things, I suppose. I want to have a plate of fit. But I don't plan on using a plate under there. My plate might better go right there like that. You know, because there's a little arm thingy. Oops. There's a little arm thing here. So plates can go here, you know, and up there. But you could potentially, in your car, if you didn't, you could put plates in like that. You know, you can carry stuff in here. Um, but mostly what I'm going to carry in here is food. So I may have some canned stuff like um, Spam, um, uh, what um, tuna, and things like that. Basically things that you can, um, can open from a can so it doesn't spoil, doesn't leak. Okay, so let me show you how this goes. In uh, two-person mode, lift that up a little bit. This slides underneath like that. So the kitchen actually sits like this. Of course, you move this. You don't want a fire, you know, it's a fire hazard having having flammable material right next to heat. But this will go in like this. I'm gonna make sure it doesn't slide around. But of course, you plug this in. And this you could use you could use this even in single person mode. Have the kitchen back here on the side, an electric kitchen. So it slides in. You can cook the rice while you're driving. So both of you sit up front like a normal car and you cook your food <laughs> you get to your destination you set up the the table and there you go
nice and easy easy peasy you know everything everything that I, I'm building I have to make sure that when you take it apart you can put it back in the car and it doesn't block your access like you, you got to still be able to move around and drive and do all the normal stuff the this kitchen in single person mode i keep wanting to say single player mode <laughs> i'm thinking video games or something but in single person mode single driver you know single person living in the vehicle mode it stays up front all the time in this front area so the kitchen is semi-permanent okay it's designed to be semi-permanent but in uh two person mode for camping for traveling cross country or whatever it it comes back here this is where it lives okay and then uh at night you can move this up front and I also found that by doing things like this um, I've readjusted the the back area I just wanted to show you a little bit of what happened back here some of you remember my other live stream my bed broke uh, let me show you how I fixed it the bed didn't really break what it did was it slid so the um, the wood here it was sliding around and I didn't want to you know the idea wasn't to bolt things down because remember we're trying not to, we're trying not to make things permanent and this has to come out so that the this chair this the seat lifts up and becomes a regular seat for another person this vehicle still functions as a regular person vehicle you know people transporter it'll carry one driver and two passengers but anyhow this is what i did i made like a, a l shape bracket thingy here and the the wood the leg sits here and it locks it in place so when my fat butt is laying on this uh this cushion thingy it won't push this leg out which is what happened when you guys saw me doing the roll remember i was in there saying how tight it was and to change positions i had to roll like a roly-poly <laughs> and when i rolled it pushed this leg out and it slid so the gap there opened up but nothing broke you know because it's all braced and everything so putting this l bracket i had to put some screws here to hold it but making an l bracket here to keep it from sliding and it's pushed to lock all the way underneath at that other junction right there where you know the um the other shelving is so it locks it into place and um i think that's pretty much it yeah so at this point right now the vehicle i gosh i I just noticed my little bracket thing. I hope I didn't cut the piece that was supposed to be there to hold that up. I'll have to look for that and make sure I didn't, didn't cut it. Because that's an important part of the um, the rear kitchen. Because, you know, this, this bedding platform, when you want to cook in the back, it actually comes back here and gives you a little shelf for cooking. So there's a, it's, this is almost like a little transformer vehicle. <laughs> it has a lot of different parts that can move. And it even carries like a full-size uh, picnic table um, and two chairs for sitting and fishing gear. So all this stuff fits in, in normal mode and um, can also be used as a um, for grocery shopping and things like that. So I think if you have a vehicle like this, a, a Vibe or a, a Matrix or something like that, a build similar to this might be worth doing if you're into camping and... Um, just wanting to be prepared for the event of an emergency where you had to suddenly leave or whatever and live in your vehicle. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna look at your comments here real quick and I'm gonna go ahead and sign out because I'm, you know, I'm, I think people are tired of my two hour long video segments. <laughs> AA Angry wants to know if I'm sleepy. Kinda, here's what happened. I had something bad happen and it has to do I'm, I'm going to not talk too long here, but it tells you a little bit about what happened with me today and why I'm a little bit sluggish and feeling faint but trying not to go to sleep. I don't know if you guys remember me telling you about becoming Wasp Man, where I got stung by a wasp and then I, I, be, I had the yellow jacket patterns all over me and I almost died when I was in the military. Well, I think my body became like, I guess what it's called, um, but you become super sensitive to like a wasp sting. And then you, you're a bee sting, and your body produces too much antibodies or whatever when you get stung, and it can kill you, okay? Well, that's what almost happened to me in the military, and I didn't notice it. Yeah, I mean, I did notice it, but I got stung, and I got super sleepy, and I slept for like two or three days. <laughs> it was like on a weekend. But anyhow, um, long story short, ever since then, uh, you know, if I get stung by a wasp, there's a chance that I can die, <laughs> because my body 
reacts not like a normal person where it just goes, oh, a sting, and then it goes away. My body keeps producing stuff, and then I start breaking out into yellow jacket pattern, and I puff up, and then I can't breathe, and then I fall asleep. Well, what happened where the RV is parked? You know, they have the, the power things where the jack is that goes in. Um, there were some wasps there that had built a nest inside the electrical outlet. I saw it when I moved here, when I parked here for the first time. But being Buddhist, I didn't want to kill it. You know, so I let them keep building. And I just tried not to disturb them too much. So I would go in there and, you know, I tried not to mess with the power system too much. But the problem I had was you, you can't just park an RV and not start it up every so often. You, you know, it just, it dies. It did that, actually. I had it sit for like a whole month where I didn't start it up and it died. So I made it a point to try to start the RV up once or twice a week. So I've been going into that panel more often. Well, today, when I went and I opened up the panel, I guess the wasps have had babies and stuff or whatever, but they became super aggressive. And I kid you not, as soon as I opened it up, this wasp flew right at my neck and stung me right over here. I don't know if there's a mark left. You can see the little red mark because I actually managed to get it under control this time, I think. I don't know if you can see it. There's a red mark here. here. Um, but when it, when it stung me, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to die. <laughs> because what's going to happen is my body's going to go into shock. I, I, I was thinking it's like hypophylactic shock or something like that. So I was like, oh shit. So I, I almost debated cutting that spot to try to make the blood flow out and get rid of the, um, the wasp poison. Okay, but I went inside the RV, got some Tiger Bomb, and, and I think Kim, Tim and any Asian knows this. Tiger Bomb fixes everything. <laughs> so, I rubbed Tiger Bomb all over, all over the sting, and then got in a, a frozen water and put it on there and said, please don't let me die. I don't want to die today. And um, I've just been kind of fighting the sleepiness because I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the, the effects of the wasp sting is making me sleepy again. So if I sound sluggish and sleepy, that's what's going on. I'm, my body's fighting the, um, the wasp poison. But anyhow, I ended up getting a can of Raid, and I exterminated the colony, which I feel very bad about. But, you know, um, I tried to live in peace with them. I tried not to kill them because of my beliefs, but it stung me. And I was like, okay, I, I tried to work with you, and you you might be killing me right now. <laughs> so I went and I wiped them all out. So the colony's dead. I killed them all. And, um, you know, I would recommend that if you go to an RV place or whatever and you see wasps like that, you might want to kill them if they're by the power thing. I was trying to let them nest and make their babies and leave before I destroyed their nest because, you know, I was going to be here for a while. So that was my reasoning. And it ended up um, getting me stung, potentially risking my life. That's where we're at. The wasps are dead. I'm sluggish, and I'm hoping that the poison wears off. That I don't, you know, go to sleep and not wake up. <laughs> so if I disappear, that's what's going on. Anyhow, I'm um, just uh, scrolling through here. Yeah, Timmy says, I'm thinking of building one. It can be moved from vehicle to vehicle or the picnic. Uh, all cooking stuffs are contained in the box. I think a chuck station, if you have a small vehicle, is with it. Maybe even a van. Uh, the key that I, the, the thing that I will point out is this, okay, from my previous build and also this one. Um, you might not want a whole box because it gets heavy, even though this wood is light. This is very light wood. Um, it gets heavy. So you'll see this build, it uses a beam here to do that. And really, if I wanted to, I could cut out a portion here, like cut a little window, you know, if I really wanted to, to lighten the load on the side walls. So... If you make it so that it's got like little beams that hold stuff in so it doesn't fly out and around. Uh, and I might cut, like I said, I could even cut out if I wanted this lighter, a little window here. But I think I'll just leave it. It seems it's not too heavy and it makes it a little bit stronger to have a solid piece there than a cut out piece. But um, having it kind of small so you can lift it. Also, only putting on it what you really need. In this case, it's a chuck station with a built-in rice cooker on top. And the reason I screwed it in was, you know, for safety so it doesn't fly around. I mean, it's still dangerous. Um, what's going to happen when it's cooking? This is going to go on there. I'm going to have a bungee cord that goes across and locks the, um, the lid in place. It did. The, I did that in Little Blue. It had a locking lid. 
and this is the locking lid so that if you get in a crash hopefully the hot crap that you're cooking doesn't fly all over you because <laughs> that's gonna that's gonna ruin your day so having a um, bungee cord that goes across two bungee cords or whatever like a V or whatever locking it in place might make it a little bit safer um, ideally you wouldn't be cooking in a car when you're driving but the reality is if you're living in a vehicle and you're making electricity you're probably gonna be cooking while driving like I did and will be doing so I'll be demonstrating that soon so you get to see me actually cooking with the inverter cooking system using the rice cooker in the front kitchen area and maybe even showing off how you know I can eat in there and um, that's pretty much it for now the vehicle is mostly done other than Trying to make things look pretty or i might just say yeah forget it. it it works it's good enough <laughs> and even this you know you, you could um this is recycled from i don't know if you guys remember hut 2.0 this came from hut 2.0 by the way so there's bits of hut 2.0 in here there's uh bits of little blue two there's even bits of little blue one still um with this vehicle so um good vibrations which is the name of this uh, micro camper has a little bit of everything it, it's i'm trying to think if it has any parts that are from yurt yeah, I think there are some parts from Yurt 1.0. So, all of you have been with the series. You could play a game called I Spy and see what you can see that came from previous builds. Because everything here has been recycled. Um, like I said, the only thing I really bought, I bought a box of um, screws and some L brackets. And um, I bought some used... Um, um what is it um cooler a used cooler which i'm not using now so i do need another cooler a small cooler but i'm thinking of getting one of those collapsible ones just for holding like soda and maybe some meat or something for one or two days i'm not going to have extensive cooling in here for food this is meant for urban camping not not wilderness if you go to wilderness you might want to take a big cooler full of um ice and food which will last you about three to five days okay five days hopefully if you stretch it out um I don't really foresee someone being able to go more than five to seven days at the most without having to restock in this vehicle because it's so small. You need to carry a lot of water and stuff. So water and stuff could be carried under here and all that, you know, and then you'd, you'd set up a camp somewhere. If you were wanting to carry five days with the water in urban stealth camp, there's no point in carrying five days of water. You're in the city. You can get by with a little jug or something. So you got to, you got to, you know, when you're designing a vehicle, you got to look at how you're going to use it, where you're going to live. If you're in an urban situation, you don't need a refrigerator or freezer, really, because you can just walk into Walmart or Publix or whatever. They have a frozen food section. That's your refrigerator. You know, you, you buy the food frozen and you cook it up. <laughs> Try not to have any leftovers. And if you have leftovers, you can put it in a little tiny bag, of, you know, cooler bag or something that lasts till the next morning, the next day, and you eat it, eat it then. Now, if you're going totally off-grid and you're going out to the, um, the woods or the wilderness and stuff, you're going to carry a little bit more food and more water. But then you might want to set up a tent or something, you know. My concern with living off-grid and stuff, depending on where you live, is bears and other animals. They get attracted to food. So you would want to bring stuff like canned foods that, you know, you open one can and you use it. You don't want to leave open food, especially open cooked food that smells good to the animals. They will come to you. <laughs> and they're not coming to say hi. They're coming because they're hungry. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign out. Just taking a real quick look here at your comments. Mark 10, good to see you on here. Um, uh, and I need an EpiPen, probably, you know, but I'm trying not to have to use one. And um, I don't know, I think I'll be okay. I'm not feeling as bad as I normally do. I'm gonna wait a couple hours and see if I become Yellow Jacket Man. And what I mean by that is, I literally become like Yellow Jacket Man. <laughs> That's my reaction. What happens is my body, the, the, the first Yellow Jacket that stung me, it was black and yellow. And it had these stripes, you know, black and yellow stripes. And when I woke up, say I fell asleep for like eight hours, 10 hours straight and I woke up, my chest was all red and it was in a pattern of red and yellow, like lines, like yellow jacket on my chest. And I was like, oh, that's weird. I'm still sleepy. And I went back and slept for like two whole days. It was like, I almost died. I didn't even, nobody even noticed because it was a weekend, you know, but that's a whole nother thing. Uh, Mobangs have just knocked their nest. I, I, I sprayed them with um, Raid and I removed the nest completely so that they don't sting the next person who gets this spot here. So they don't, you know, and my advice is if you see these guys, even if you're Buddhist like me, 
pray for forgiveness and kill them. You know, I, I probably should have did that the first time I saw them, especially since they're they're potentially a deadly threat to me personally. Um, I probably should have killed it, but you know, I was like, well, you know, I don't want to kill anything unless I absolutely have to. But once they stung me, all bets were off. Um, just scrolling through, David wants to know if I'm allergic to bees. Not so much bees, I don't think, but the wasps. I don't know about bees. Um, the, the wasps, so ever since that stung more than 20-something, 30 years ago almost. 40, 30 years ago. Just scrolling through here. Mark 10 wants to know if I'm using a sine wave inverter. No, I'm using um, the cheapy inverters. I don't really use the more expensive ones. Um, I know some people say that, you know, they swear by the more expensive ones because they cost like two or three times more than the regular um, um, converters. But I've not had any problems, especially with my, um, you know, rice cooker and stuff like that. I haven't really had any problems with my computers and stuff either on the, um, the RV. Now, I did have some problems, but it... It wasn't with the um, it wasn't with the inverter. It was with the generator. When I had the RV hooked up a generator, it was frying some of my electronics. I think sometimes if you have a, a gas generator, the voltage might spike or something, and it fries any sensitive electronics. So you might want some kind of voltage regulator if you use a generator, you know. But I most of the stuff that it fried was like junk stuff that I bought from um, Goodwill. So I just bought another one like a microwave it fried a microwave it fried uh, um it actually fried i think two microwaves <laughs> and i think it fried my roku unit and i think that was it you know i think it fried a computer too uh an old desktop computer so but it didn't fry it all at once you know fried it at different times if those things were plugged in and turned on while the generator was running so i'm a little more concerned with um generator power gas generator running on the rv than i am with um using uh solar power and the inverter mobang says use dried food and water if you want to stay out there a long time yep yep the other thing you can carry and cook in this thing is um those packets of um noodles i know they're not good okay we're talking just survival type food for emergencies and stuff but you can get those packets of the the ramen noodles or the lo mein noodles and i can cook them up you've seen me cook up ramen noodles so you can get a pack of 12 that's like 10 12 days if you stretch it out you know and then all you need is water and some meat and if you you know were going to be out in an area that was hot and dry and not a lot of meat you can get canned meat or you can get um beef jerky and use beef jerky as meat you know protein and stuff like that and you can get um, freeze-dried uh, vegetables um, there's a lot of things you can do we might experiment with some of that just to show survival type stuff not that I, I think we're gonna go there but you know with the way things are right now with the world and especially the United States and stuff you know a lot of people are unsure even me unsure what's gonna happen next so it might not hurt to prepare and start looking at options but in, in all honesty if you have to depend on dried foods or canned foods or whatever and, you know, um, the world fell apart, you're not going to last very long. Um, the people who are going to survive in that type of situation, if you really want to be one of the survivors, are the people who can actually hunt, who can kill an animal and skin it and, you know, debone it and do all the stuff you need to do to live. Uh, me, I don't know if I can do that. If I had to, I suppose I could. I think, you know, I think as a human, as a, an animal, a living creature, we all have that survival instinct inside us. So, you know, just like how I killed the, the wasp because they, they attacked me. <laughs> if I have to eat something, I will kill it. You know, I don't, I don't do it for fun. You know, I don't take any joy in killing something. But if I have to do it to defend my family or myself, or if I have to eat, then, you know, I don't have a problem with doing it. And um, I haven't had to, other than fish, really kill any creature because I don't hunt. And uh, for survival, I haven't really had to, you know. And, and one of the reasons I kind of prefer fish is because I'm in Florida. Fish are everywhere. But the other thing probably has to do with the fact that they're fish. They're different than us. They're not an ant. I mean, they're an animal, but they're not a mammal or something. Killing a squirrel or killing a, um, a deer or, you know even a, a boar or something like that 
I would do it in a survival situation, but unless I had to, I wouldn't want to do it. Just because um, they're similar to me. They're mammals. You know, they're like me. But um, survival, you got to do what you got to do, man. Yeah, Mark 10 says I'm using the modified sine wave inverter. Yeah, those, those things are cheaper. Um, like I said, I, I use the cheaper stuff. Uh, how many watts? 750 watts. If you really want to look at it, I know this is going to go on, but I'm, I'm going to do another video here, a final tour and video, but just a quick point out for Mark since he's here. It has a cheap Walmart one that's, I think, $49 or $59. It's 70, 750 watts, the little plastic one, but any, any will do. You only really need um, about 300, 350 watts to run one rice cooker, but the reason I got 750 watts is that's a good size for running power tools. You, you know, you probably want 750 to 1,000 watts if you run like a drill or a jigsaw. I have a cordless drill, but I have a jigsaw that requires 120 volt power, and I can run it off this. So that's why I, I recommend 750 instead of 300. If you're not going to run any power tools and you're only using rechargeables or whatever, you could probably get by with a 300 or 350 watt inverter, which is going to be more efficient than running a 750. But because I do some building, you know, some of you saw some of the videos where I build huts and yurts and stuff out in the woods and stuff. I, I often have to power power tools, and that's why I go with 750. I also have solar that's not hooked up, which I will probably go ahead and hook up just to show you guys how it can be done. And I may leave it up just for show, even though it's not really necessary or needed for, for the urban camping I'm going to be doing. But at least for the build, I'm, I will show you how the solar works and how simple it is to hook it all up. And I think that's about it. I think I'm all caught up on the uh, the comments. I do appreciate all of you for uh, joining me. Make sure you hit the like button on this video if you enjoy it. Share it with people who you think might find it useful. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please make sure you do so. And tap the notification bell to get the latest updates. I'm going to try to keep mostly van and RV and, and stuff, uh, car builds type stuff on this channel. Make sure you haven't already gone over to the Pay It For channel that you do that. Uh, Timothy and I and some of the other people that are running it will be uh, making some changes there to update the, the channel and, and bring on more videos. We are in process of trying to get that channel monetized so it starts generating money. And that money is going to be used for the members of the Pay It Forward channel when they're in the Starfish Network. Starfish Network, you can only get in by invitation from a member, existing member. So when you see the live broadcast and stuff on Pay It Forward, make sure you chat with those people there, get to know one another. And um, somebody who's already in the network, you know, if you befriend them and become friends with them um, or they become friends with you, they can vouch for you and get you into the network. You need to get into the network to be able to access the money and other stuff that will be coming in to the, uh, the channel. Because we're doing that because of the, the attacks that uh, the channel and this channel is getting from all the trolls and haters. There's a lot of people out there for some reason that just hate people. They, they must hate their life or something. But... They attack channels and, and other people that, that I guess they feel are more successful than they are. I don't know. I don't know what their reasoning is. Other than that, um, we have to now screen and filter for that, sadly. So until next time, everyone, God bless you all. Please stay safe. Uh, make sure you go to Pay It Forward, hit subscribe, and the notification on that. I will mostly be doing chats and stuff on that channel. Builds and stuff I'll be doing on here. On this channel, hopefully the next video, you will see the system up and running. And uh, maybe you'll actually see me out there testing it for real. I, I do need to do another dry run close by, you know, home base before I go out off into the world <laughs> to test out the whole system to make sure it works the way it's, an inten it's intended. So until next time, everyone, take care. Please be safe. All right. Hey, an old lady. Good to see you on here. Yeah, it is. Actually, you know, um, when you saw me, I don't know if you saw the other video, when I laid down, it was really, really tight. But now I have the ability to put that front seat all the way down. And when I do that, it's actually quite roomy. You know, I mean, it's not as roomy as Little Blue was, but it's not too bad. It's actually not too bad. So when I do the, um, the full-blown test where I sleep all night in it and stuff, I'll try to broadcast and, and um, you know, show off the, the system and show what it's really like, and you'll get to see how it works. <laughs> so take care, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye now.